This is a cheap live adventure to Lviv in Ukraine and here's my Ryanair plane at Lviv Airport. So then I leave the airport and I long to an epic trolley bus. Make sure you check out my video of the trolley buses here. So I get on this trolley bus along to some awesome Soviet tower blocks. Soviet blocks are just epic. They look quite rough. They got cheap brickwork and this is all bricks you'd normally put cladding in front except there's no cladding and the bricks don't look like they're pointed that well and the entranceway looks really rough like it's an abandoned building except it's not abandoned. So going into a Soviet block and the lift is an epic old Soviet lift. Let's ride it. And now go along to a modern shopping centre. This is the Victoria Garden Centre. And inside the centre it looks really nice. And the lift is a hydraulic lift. And because it's got a side chassis, the way they've done it makes it look like a lift's floating, which is actually a nice feature. And this shopping centre actually reminds me of the sort of centres you get in Poland. And the fountain is actually a musical fountain. <laughs> I now leave the shopping centre and go to some more Soviet blocks. And the next one is a really epic one and inside it is very grotty. And the lift, let's just say, is the most epic old Soviet lift I've come across so far. So let's just test something. I'm going to put my foot in the way of the doors as the doors close.
and the motor carried on closing and the mechanism actually fully shut, leaving the doors behind on a spring where my foot is. So when I move my foot away, the door spring shut, but the mechanism is actually already fully shut. No wonder these lifts are famous for the lift sometimes moving with the doors open. What a weird mechanism. So remember, folks, if you go to a Soviet block, make sure you don't let the lift doors close on you. <laughs> And now I go along to the next Soviet block. And in this one, they've refurbished their old Soviet lift. But they haven't modernised it. They've just refurbished it and made it look all metal. But it's still basically the same lift. <laughs> And now I go to the centre of Lviv, and let's take a look around. It's quite touristy, this is what the centre looks like. And along to a hotel, which is a five star hotel, and the lifts are Otis's. It's 2000, but I think it's a chicken too by sound of it. And I know I go to Lviv Hospital. I didn't actually get that far in this hospital before I was kicked out. In Ukrainian hospitals, unlike English hospitals, it's hard to just wander around without being questioned and along to her first lift, which is an epic old Soviet lift. Also in this hostel were some very, very interesting service lifts which looked absolutely amazing. And as I was going in the service lift is when I got caught and kicked out, which is really disappointing. So let's go look around the centre of Lviv. And the centre isn't really that interesting. Out of town is much nicer where all of the Soviet blocks are. So in Lviv, there are trams and these trams are very knackered. Make sure you check out my video of the trams here. In several places, the track is in a right state. If it's not fixed soon, there's certain sections where it looks like the trams could actually derail. It is that bad.
train, as well as the trams and trolley buses, there's also crazy buses. And unlike Kiev, it actually costs more to go on a crazy bus than a tram or trolley bus. Trams and trolley bus cost 5 Ukrainian, which is 14 pence. And to go on a crazy bus is 7 Ukrainian, which is 19 pence. And the crazy buses are very small and they are crammed full of people. But despite this, pretty much most people here prefer to go on the crazy buses. Why is that? Well, because they are much faster. The drivers are absolutely crazy. And since I just can't go to Ukraine without going on a crazy bus, let's now take a ride on one. And now I ended up in this epic Soviet tower block area. These tower blocks look absolutely amazing. Just take a look at this. Does that look just epic? So getting into the tower blocks is a little bit harder than you'd think because people do question you here. And after being questioned a couple times by residents and a couple times by the concierge, I worked out the easiest way to get in is to follow people like I live in walking back to my flat. So along to the tram stop I go, wait for a tram full of people and then I pick someone who looks like the sort of person that isn't going to question me and I just follow them and hope that the Soviet block I lead me to is an epic one. The first person I followed took me to a Soviet block and the old Soviet lift wasn't working. In fact, half of the Soviet lifts I came across were actually not working. So back to tram stop, pick another random person who looks like they won't question me and follow him along to the Soviet block at air going to. And in this one, you press the button, it lights up, but the lift never comes. It wasn't working. So back to the tram stop again, follow another person and they lead me to an absolutely epic looking Soviet block. And there's two lifts in here, one of them wasn't working but the other one was. So let's ride it. Test it, it feels horrible. Oh fuck. Oh, I don't know how I feel that. I've been advised by a few people, these Soviet lifts, if you press stop, sometimes this cuts power and doesn't release the brakes, so you should only test stop going downwards. I do not know if that's true or not, but it sort of scared me into not testing stop on the upwards journey. No, no, it's nice to know. And now along to Lviv Central Station. This station is quite creepy looking and very epic and very, very Soviet looking. I'm going to go to the 
And hmm, what's that I can smell? Is that a steam train? Nope, it's just the coal fire on the electric trains. I don't know why the electric trains have coal fires, it's very weird. Let's take a look at the trains. And along to a place where I was staying, which cost just £9.50 to stay here for one night. That is crazily cheap. And this is actually the cheapest place I've ever stayed in. And despite how cheap it was, it was actually pretty nice. There was nothing wrong with it. That is amazing how cheap it is. So the next day, and I'll go to the next shopping centre. And this shopping centre looks very posh. These shopping centres remind me of the sort of things you get in Poland. But unlike Poland, I started to notice that these centres were pretty much just for the rich people in Ukraine. Because these centres seem like they're very much priced out of what ordinary Ukrainians could afford. These shopping centres have a supermarket, and I ended up going to a supermarket quite a lot, just simply because it's the only supermarket I could find. And the prices here weren't really much cheaper than English prices. Most food in Ukraine is much, much cheaper. Ordinary Ukrainians could not afford to shop here. And this shopping centre seemed quite empty, and there's not many people in it, and there was lots of security about. So long to the lift which is this really unusual lift I think it might be an Asian generic and it's got fully intelligent leveling and back into the centre of Lviv and along to the town hall where there's a protest about Crimea being invaded by Russia and then I realised I'm never going to get to ride the epic longest trolley bus route in the entire world which is the 50 mile long trolley bus in Crimea and thanks to Russia just stepping in and just grabbing it I'm never going to get to go there now Way. And now I go to the next shopping centre, which is Forum Lviv, which has some glass Schindler 5500s. I might be imagining it, but these are quite small, and I'm not sure if they've got slightly less build to them as a normal 5500. Maybe I should call them 4500s. <laughs>
and now go back to the airport, which has some Schindler Eurolifts. Thank <laughs> you.